Hi guys and happy Wednesday. Today we are going to continue working in chapter 5 section 4 looking at those sum and difference formulas. So just as a little review of what we did yesterday, you were asked to find the sine, cosine, or tangent in degree form of something that was not on the unit circle. So the first example I believe they asked us to find the cosine of 75. Now cosine is not on the unit circle. So what these formulas allowed us to do is to find two values that are on the unit circle that you can either add or subtract to create the measurement that you're looking for. And in that case, it was 75. So we took 45 plus 30. We were able to add those two values to make 75. Now yesterday, we looked at all of the problems in terms of degrees. You can also do this when our angles are in radian measures. Okay, but if you're going ahead and looking, all of our radian measurements, you're going to notice that they are written as fractions. So if I am finding the sum and difference of fractions, you can only add and subtract fractions if you have a common denominator. Now looking all the way through our unit circle, if I want to make a common denominator, I would have to go ahead and use 12. So the first thing we're going to do today, and it's going to make the rest of the day so much easier, is we're going to go ahead and create those common denominators. So I have to look if the first denominator here is a 6. I need it to be a 12. So I need to multiply top and bottom by 2, so I would have 2 pi over 12. To turn a 4 into a 12, you're multiplying by 3, so 3 pi over 12. Here it would be a 4. 4 pi over 12. To turn a 2 into a 12, you have to multiply by 6, so 6 pi over 12. Here you would multiply by a 4, giving you 8 pi over 12. 4, to turn it into a 12, you'd multiply by 3. This would be 9 pi over 12. To turn a 6 into a 12, you're multiplying top and bottom by 2, giving us 10 pi over 12. Pi, we have 12 pi over 12. And again, I'm just looking at the denominators. I want everything to have a denominator of 12. Here I'd have to multiply by 2, top and bottom. So this would become 14 pi over 12. To turn a 4 into a 12, you multiply by 3. So this is 15 pi over 12. Here you'd multiply by a 4, giving you 16 pi over 12. To turn a 2 into a 12, you have to multiply top and bottom by 6. So this is 18 pi over 12. To turn a 3 into a 12, you multiply by 4, so it's 20 pi over 12. The next one you'd be multiplying by a 3, so it's 21 pi over 12. Multiply by a 2, so it's 22 pi over 12. Finally, remember when you get all the way to the end, it would have to reduce to 2 pi. So that would have to be 24 pi over 12. So that's step one. Now the cool thing is, when we go to do this, it's going to be so much easier if I look at my radian measurements with that common denominator. So again, we're going to start off. They're going to tell us if they want subtraction or addition. Okay, We're going to use subtraction. We want the sine of pi over 12. So if I look, I don't have a, a just a single pi over 12. I have 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12. I want 1 pi over 12. So when I go to do this, I'm going to say, well, let's take the sine of, if I go 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12, that would give me 1 pi over 12. So 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. Now, obviously, I know that these are not in their reduced form. So if it does help you, 4 pi over 12 is pi over 3. That's our A value when we look at the formula. Minus 3 pi over 12 in its reduced form that you're used to seeing on the unit circle is pi over 4, and that is B. So I'm looking at the sign. I have subtraction. Okay, so the same thing as yesterday. The sign A minus B. So I take the sign of A. So the sign of pi over 3 times the cosine of B, B is pi over 4, minus the cosine of A, A is pi over 3, times the sine of B, B is pi over 4. So I have the sine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4, minus 
cosine of pi over three times the sine of pi over four. Now we're gonna go ahead and use that unit circle. Remember the sine is the y value. So if I'm looking at pi over three, the y value is square root of three over two. Cosine of pi over four, square root of two over two, minus cosine of pi over three is one half. The sine of pi over four is square root of two over two. So again, very similar to what we did yesterday, it's just that the initial setup is in radians versus degrees. Top times top, square root of three times square root of two is square root of six, two times two is four, minus top times top, one times the square root of two is the square root of two, two times two is four. I have a common denominator, so the four carries on over. These are not like terms, so you do need to write the square root of six minus the square root of two on the top, this would be your final answer and you're done. We're gonna go ahead and look at a few more, okay? The next one, they want us to find the cosine of seven pi over 12. So again, if I look, I don't have a seven pi over 12, I have a six and it jumps right to eight. So we have to use some or difference formulas in order to make this happen. They want us to use addition. So I can go ahead and actually use the same two that I just used. If I look at four pi over 12 and three pi over 12, if I add them, your common denominator is a 12, which is what you want. Four pi plus three pi would get you to the seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those same angles that we did last time, four pi over 12, but this time I'm adding them, three pi over 12. Again, if this kind of freaks you out a little bit because they're not reduced, four pi over 12 is the same as pi over three. This time we are adding. 3 pi over 12, when we looked before, 3 pi over 12 is the same as pi over 4 from the unit circle. When the formula says A, we are using pi over 3. When the formula says B, we are using pi over 4. This time I am looking at a cosine and addition. Okay, and this is just on the other side of your notes. So cosine A plus B, I'm taking the cosine of A, so cosine of pi over 3, times the cosine of b, pi over four, minus the sine of a, pi over three, times the sine of b, pi over four. So I just used the formula on the other side of your notes to go ahead and fill this in. Now it's unit circle. Pi over three, cosine is one half. Pi over four, cosine is square root of two over two, minus pi over three, the sine is square root of three over two. Pi over four, the sine is square root of two over two. Now when I go ahead and I multiply, top times top, bottom times bottom, I have a square root of two over four minus, top times top, bottom times bottom, square root of six over four. When I write the final answer, I'm gonna put it way over here, guys. When I write that final answer, the four carries over. These are not like terms. So I do have to write both values. So square root of two minus square root of six, that is my final answer. Because this was an addition problem. You technically could have put three pi over 12 in front of four pi over 12. Your solution would have been negative square root of six plus a square root of two over four. These two solutions are equivalent, but if you would have written it in the opposite order, your terms would have just been in the opposite order on the top. Okay, so just want to point that out in case you are checking your answers in the back of the book or working ahead of me. All right, let's look at a couple more today. We want to use subtraction, and we're going to go ahead and look at the sign. So I want to find two values that if I subtract them, I can make 7 pi over 12. Now the 12 we know is going to remain the same because when you're adding and subtracting fractions, the common denominator stays. What we need to do is find two values that if I subtract, I can get that 7. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at, well nine, I have a nine and I have a two. And nine minus two, oh sorry, here we go. I have my nine pi over 12 here and my two pi over 12, the 12 would remain. Nine pi minus two pi would be seven pi. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So I would have the sine of nine pi over 12 minus two pi over 12 because that would get me to the value that I'm looking for which is seven pi over 12. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce them. If I look to see nine pi over 12, I got that from three pi over four. So this is three pi over four. All you'd have to do to reduce this 
is take top and bottom divided by three. Nine divided by three gets you to a three, 12 divided by three gets you to a four. So you can either just reduce it, you can leave it how it is, you can look at the unit circle and your labels. If I look at two pi over 12, I got that from pi over six. All you're doing here is dividing top and bottom by two to reduce the fraction. When the formula says A, you're gonna use three pi over four. When the formula says B, you are going to use pi over six. I am looking at sine and subtraction. So here's my formula. It is the second formula on the list. I have the sine of A, three pi over four, times the cosine of B, pi over six, minus the cosine of A, three pi over four, times the sine of B, pi over six. So I just filled in the formula using our A and B. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use the unit circle. Remember the sine is the y value, the cosine is the x value. If I go to three pi over four, the sine, the y value is a square root of two over two. If I go to pi over six, the cosine, the x value, is square root of three over two. Minus, if I go to three pi over four, the cosine negative two square root of two. If I go to pi over six on the unit circle, the sine, the y value, is one half. Top times top, bottom times bottom, square root of six over four. Ooh, minus a negative, okay? This is gonna be negative times a positive, so it's gonna be negative. Minus that negative, this problem is gonna change into a addition problem. Two times two is four. Square root of two times one is a square root of two. Your final answer, again guys, I'm gonna carry it way over here. I did not leave myself a lot of room. The common denominator carries. These are not like terms, so you would have both the square root of six plus the square root of two on the top. The minus the negative right here is how it ended up changing to a plus sign. Okay, now one thing I realized at this point, you guys, is we had not done a tangent yet. So before we move on to the second part tomorrow, I do want to make sure that we definitely look at one of these tangent problems. They are a little bit different. It's just following the formula, but you have rules like you can't have a square root on the bottom of a fraction, that sort of thing. So we are gonna go ahead and look at a tangent problem so we can work through the process. We want to find the tangent of 13 pi over 12. And again, that's a problem that I can't do just looking at the unit circle. I have 12 pi over two and 14 pi over two, but I don't have that 13. So we're gonna find that using addition. So I need to find two numbers on the top that I can add together and get a 13. So I'm gonna use nine and four because nine pi plus four pi would give me 13 pi. The common denominator is 12. So I'm gonna write this as tangent of nine pi over 12 plus four pi over 12, because if I add these two and they want me to use addition, I would get 13 pi over 12. I can go ahead and reduce those. Nine pi over 12 again is three pi over four. Plus, if I'm looking at four pi over 12, that is really pi over three. So as we're doing the formula, when they say A, it is three pi over four. When they say B, it is pi over three. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna use a separate sheet of paper because tangents sometimes take a little bit more room and I don't want it to be scrunched and then end up confusing you guys. Okay, so if I look here, the tangent I am adding so I'll just put the formula right here for us. It's the tangent of A plus the tangent of B over one minus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. So one thing that I want you to realize is that we're gonna have to be able to figure out the tangents. The tangents are the Y value divided by the X value. So if I just want to find the tangent of A, which is the tangent of three pi over four, if I look at three pi over four, it's negative square root of two over square root of two over two. So the tangent of A, if I take Y divided by X, the Y and the X value have the same value. They're both square root of two over two, but this is a positive divided by a negative, so it's a negative one. So wherever I see the tangent of A, I'm gonna replace it with a negative one. Now if I look at the tangent of B, B is pi over three. Pi over three is one half and the square root of three over two. To find the tangent, it is the y value 
divided by x, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of x. My twos would cross cancel, leaving you a square root of three over one, which is a square root of three. So whenever I see the tangent of b, I'm putting a positive square root of three. Okay, I hope that made sense. So what I did, they wanted us to add to 13 pi over 12, nine pi over 12 plus four pi over 12, if I add the numerators, nine plus four gets me to 13. Then I just went ahead and reduced the two fractions so it was more familiar to you when you're looking at the unit circle. The first value is always A, the second value is always B. Here is the formula for the tangent if you're adding. It's the tangent of A plus the tangent of B over one minus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. So I started off by finding, okay, well what is the tangent of A? A is 3 pi over 4, there's the ordered pair for 3 pi over 4, y divided by x gives me a negative 1. To find the tangent of b, because I notice I'm going to need that twice in this problem. I find the tangent of b, b is pi over 3, the ordered pair for pi over 3 is 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2. If I take y divided by x, which is the same as y multiplied by the reciprocal, these would cross cancel, leaving me a square root of three, okay? So anytime I see a tangent of B, I have to put in a square root of three. Let's go ahead and keep moving forward. So the formula says tangent of A, so negative one, plus tangent of B, square root of three, over one minus. Now it's saying take the tangent of A times the tangent of B. Negative one times the square root of three is a negative square root of three. Here I'm minusing a negative. If you minus a negative, it's a plus. So we've gone through the formula. Yay! I can't leave that as my answer though because I have a square root on the bottom. If you have two terms on the bottom and one of them has a square root term, what you have to do is multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. The bottom is one plus a square root of three because I had that minus a negative. So if I want to get rid of the square root on the bottom, I need to keep the one the same. I need to keep the square root of three the same, but I have to change the sign from a positive to a negative. Now I'm foiling. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative times a negative is a positive. One times the square root of three is a square root of three. One times the square root of three is a square root of three. Positive times a negative is a negative. Square root of three times the square root of three is the square root of nine, which is three. So the top I can combine like terms. 1 square root of 3 plus 1 square root of 3 is 2 square roots of 3. Negative 1 combined with a negative 3 is negative 4. That's the top. Now when I FOIL the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times a negative square root of 3 is a negative square root of 3. Positive square root of 3 times 1 is a positive square root of 3. Positive times a negative is a negative. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is a square root of 9, which is 3. Negative square root of 3, positive square root of 3 cancels. When you multiply by a conjugate, remember those square root terms are always going to cancel. Those middle terms are going to be gone. 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. To get your final answer, anything that's not underneath the radical, you have to simplify if you can. I can take positive 2 divided by negative 2 and it's a negative 1 square root of 3. Negative divided by a negative, this is going to be positive. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, so there's an example of a tangent one. Again, it's just finding those two measurements that you can add or subtract to create the measurement that they're looking for, the one that is not present on the unit circle. From there, you follow the formula. When you get the tangent, sometimes it is a little bit tricky because you may end up with a square root on the bottom. Then you just have to go back to what you learned in algebra. If you wanna cancel a square root on the bottom, you have to rationalize the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. I hope you guys had a great time during our lesson today. Um, I hope you're doing well and I will talk to you soon. See you later.